Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, with a third time trying to do this intro, here to talk about Dragalia Lost. Today's video, I'm going to be going over the This Month in Dragalia Lost. I'm going to be reading parts of it and talking about uh, how I feel about the things that they mention in it. There should be some stuff in there. I already know some of the things in there, but there's not a nut, there's not as much as I would have want. But that's un understandable considering that this was probably planned around the time to the second year anniversary. So that's what today's video is going to end up being. Man, that was a really hard intro for some reason. Uh, if you end up liking this video, leave a like, comment about any of the things we talk about in today's video, and you can subscribe to me if you want some more Dragalia Law stuff. All right, so let's go. This is just basically saying, hey, the Forgotten Truths of Raid event is currently going on. I hope you enjoyed it. Learn more about the truth, Mordecai, Morisayan, and all those other things. These are the, the current gala banner. By the way, an update. I did pull uh, Mina, Min, Mine, Mene, and Zena. So I'll probably make a video with them at some point. Uh, I have to make a weapon with them because I really don't. <laughs> I did not have a light staff at all. Hey, the Dragalia Lost story for everyone. I have to make a weapon for this unit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, so here's the first part. Regarding adjustments to weapons and worm prints. As a result of the extensive changes made to the weapon crafting and worm print systems in version 2.0, we reset certain progress that players has m had made in the number of weapons and worm prints in their possession, as well as how far those weapons and worm prints had been upgraded. At the same time, we provided goodwill gestures to affected players in the form of materials that players had spent into craft and upgrade the affected weapons and worm prints. Worm prints had their augments reset and unequipped from teams before being provided as goodwill gestures. Given how, given how radically all of the moving parts of these systems have changed, it was virtually impossible to keep a player's team exactly as they were after the update was implemented. In the short term, these changes mean that players may have to recraft certain weapons and have to re-equip worm prints to their teams. And we apologize for any inconveniences this may cause. Please note that certain weapons that no longer exist in version 2.0, such as weapons from the Fire Emblem Heroes and Monster Hunter events, may still be unlocked and used as weapon skins by upgrading other weapons. Here they're showing the progression of that. We understand that these changes are numerous and a lot to take in at once, but we believe that they will benefit the game in the long run. Weapon crafting progression is now uh, progression progression is now more streamlined and easier to understand and worm prints now provide a greater level of flexibility and customization in team building. We've paired these quality of life changes with revisions to adventures and quest balance and hope to all it hope it all adds up to produce an even more enjoyable experience for our players. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of an update on this. Um, yeah, I actually, yeah, I've, I think I, I feel like sometimes I'm in the minority. I really like everything about it. Everyone who was complaining to me, I feel like is just complaining because it's brand new and it basically tossed off everything now to be fair i do think that a lot of system changes need to be implemented a way to make worm prints a set the way to keep them on an adventure stuff like that but a lot of the things that i want like a better way to sort worm prints all the things i want were problems of the original system so really all my problems already stemmed from the old system and i'm just like angry that they had not angry i'm just annoyed that they didn't fix it when they made this new system that they're the fact that we have the same sorting for worm prints for two years and there's literally a button that sorts a type of worm print that doesn't exist is insane to me we need to get that um fixed as soon as possible that would be one of my improvements for it but in terms of everything i think the crafting weapons is way better the only problem with it is the cost it sure as hell costs a lot more rupees and uh, materials now um you could see that as hey now i have something to grind or you could see it as i think that's excessive i think both mindsets are in a way correct um i hope that later on they kind of fix that i don't think they really mentioned that at all in here but something about the rupee change has to happen like it's they're asking for way too much rupees for some weapon stuff it's insane um, 
Regarding the overhauled appearance of 3D models, as players have no doubt noticed, we have implemented a fresh look for Adventurers and Dragons, bringing the 3D models even closer to their illustrations. We've not, we're not done, I was about to say twerking, we're not done tweaking though, and we plan to adjust some aspects of the graphics, such as the strength of the shadows, until the presentation is right where we want it. Look forward to more details in a separate notification. Okay, cool. Plans for this month, starting at 11 p.m. October 4th, an additional story uh, content and difficulty levels for second half of Forgotten Truth raid event will unlock. For this event, a mega level 3 will be added, and this new difficulty level will be quite the struggle to overcome. Wow, mega level 3, okay. This event also features a solo-only quest with fixed parameters in the same content as the Omega level difficulty battle, but it's designed to allow as many players as possible to experience the epic showdown with Morise without having to worry about whether or not their team is strong enough to participate. That's cool. I think I think that's pretty neat. That's been a, a lot of people's problems that they're like, well, I don't really have a good team for it. Um, so that's that that's good. The battle with Mor uh, I'm, I keep calling him Morse, but that's not his name. Morisati will have four phases, and in each phase, the boss will change appearance and use different attacks. Even the stage and background music will change. We hope to enjoy the dynamic battle. Okay. It looks like they're trying to. So my favorite fight of all Dragalia is the first year. It's against the Frieza alien when he puts up the giant death ball, and you have a very limited time to kill it or you die. Um, and if you get hit by it, it destroys the entire universe. I've always loved that. So I've been wondering how they were going to top that. And this feels like them trying to top it by having a Metal Gear Solid 4S, like four different phases, four different background songs. Let's go. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's good. Starting at 11 p.m. October 4 for Prize Showcase, in which the Manic Caster wielding adventurer Ilya will appear, <laughs> will appear, will be held. Wait, what? To show in which Manicaster wielding adventurer Ilya will appear, will be held. There needs to be like a comment or something. Something like that. For further details like her stats and skills, please see the corresponding in-game notification. When you summon on a prize showcase, you will receive a bonus prize for each summon. It's been a while since the last prize showcase was held, but in the upcoming one, we plan to revise the overall lineup of bonus prizes based on the recent adjustments to the game balance. Thank you for understanding. Um, I don't know. Okay, so the, the prize summoning I thought was really cool when they did it. It's, I'm surprised they haven't done it since. Um, I don't like the idea of them tweaking it. I don't know. I hope that means that we will be giving way fucking more as opposed to getting way less. At least that's my current hope. Let's see. We'll wait and see. I thought prize showcases were really cool, so I would love to see them come back. Alright, Master Difficulty will be added to Celiala, C Celiala? Cecilia's Wrath at the Agito Uprising, Agito Uprising at 11 p- I can't say any names. Forgive me. Quest for Solo and Co-op Play will be added at, a sa at the same time. A Halloween theme onslaught event will start on 11 p.m. October 11, 2020. I think this is when we can expect the Halloween banner, but I don't. That's too vague of anything. I hope that's not our only Halloween theme thing. I really hope so. I really love Halloween, so the idea of them kind of just making Halloween an onslaught event and nothing else kind of seems like a bummer to me. But hopefully that's not. Maybe it's like summer where it's like there's an onslaught event to begin and then later on more Halloween stuff, but then that would also mean two Halloween banners. I don't know, let, let's keep going on. Facility event, um, Accursed Archives and Stirring Shadows will... The Accursed Archive Facility event and Stirring Shadows Story event will make a return on 11 p.m. October 18th. The adventure story for Curran, Heinwald, and Lothenia are clearly tied to these two events, so use this opportunity to learn more about the allies you have already. I feel like this is a way for them to make a Halloween event by adding two very spooky stories, but that does not change the fact that these are not Halloween. Come on. Also, what? who are they going to add? What are they going to do? I just thought... I... So, here's wh why I'm saying that. Heinwald, Mana Spiral. Curran, Mana Spiral. Lathenia, uh, Ma Mana Spiral. Bacon Priestess, the only one who has not does not have a Mana Spiral. But there's really not a lot of characters 
in the accursed archives in stirring shadows unless they want to add more abomination type creatures not abomination um eldritch horrors hmm I don't know, it could be interesting. I guess we'll have to wait and see. There are definitely hints at some pretty spooky shit going on here, so we'll see how this goes. Chapter 16 of the main campaign will be held on 11 p.m. October 21st, as revealed in the latest episode of Drag Dragalia Digest. A new campaign uh, will be added every two months. Chapter 16, the prince and the friends are out the destination to set Alberia, but who or what is the driving force behind this decision. Even Alberia has begun to change. What's more, a new adventurer will join you in Chapter 16. Who, you ask? You'll just have to play to find out. Okay. It's gotta be Leonidas. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who else it could be. Leonidas had a... had a full different character art when we saw him um, in the Digest. So my current gut feeling is this chapter, it's Leonidas, and then the next chapter is not. Because the fairy woman says that there is a point where they actually where fairies grow up and they turn into the adult looking fairies that we have now so I don't that's a shame for me because I kind of wish that not stayed small and just got a gun but hey what can you do about that future updates while version 2.0 brought with it a bevy of adjustments and improvements to many aspects of the game we weren't able to polish some features as much as we had hoped to by its release, and going forward we'll continue to tweak the systems introduced in this major update. While the ability to equip up to 5 warm pins at a single weapon allows for a large degree of customization, it also means that players have more things to juggle when building a team, from scratch. With that in mind, a feature that allows players to register sets is currently in development. Also in order to help players more quickly find the particular warm print they're looking for, <laughs> we'll consider ways to improve the sort- THANK THE LORD! Thank you, but we hope that players are enjoying the improvements made to the weapon and crafting system. We realize that no system is perfect, so if you have any feedback about these changes, please let us know and leave feedback in Feature and Guide. Yeah, yeah, Feature and Game. You always leave feedback, because you can't leave me feedback until they can't ignore it anymore. A new difficulty level for the Aguido Uprising that's even tougher than Masters in the works. Jesus Christ. Materials obtained from cleaning the- oh, this is what they were talking about a whole long time ago about harder quests that really only just give you something. Materials obtained from clearing quests and this difficulty can be used to upgrade Aguido weapons- oh shit. Uh, but doing so will not increase- oh thank god. Will not increase the parameters by much. Players will, however, notice a difference in the upgraded weapon's appearance. For example, flame-attuned weapons may be engulfed in flames. Take a look. Sure. This new difficulty level is designed to push both your skills and managing resources to make adventurers stronger and precisely controlling them in the heat of the battle to their limits. The first of the Aguido Uprising quests to feature the difficulty will be Vulture, of course. As with other quests, there will be solo play variant and a co-op variant released at the same time. I don't know how the hell that solo one's gonna work out. We plan to bring back the ranking event held in the first anniversary as a, at a wide, wider scale. Last time players went against the clock in advanced dragon trials, but this time the player will compete for the best time in content that is more accessible so that many players are- Hmm. So, what does that mean? It is best to content more accessible so that as many players as possible can parameters in the event. Okay. That's... Hmm. We'll see how this goes. Uh, as the Season Zero subtitle of the Alberian Battle Royale suggests, this is just the beginning for the latest game mode. We plan to add some new features and provide continuous updates as it goes on. Sure, cool. I think it's a cool mode. It's a good little cool mode to kind of <laughs> just fuck around with, have some fun. Maybe do something different for once. At the moment, we have uh, plans for new skill tokens, new map mechanics, the features that allows players to unlock skins of adventurers in their roster, and a feature that will allow players to use weapon skins. New high difficulty quests are in development. These are new quests designed to succeed Advanced Dragon Trials and Aikido Uprising in difficulty progression. We'll provide more details as time goes on, so stay tuned for this month of Dragalia Lost and other information. Further information will be provided early November. Be sure to stay to you up to date. 
In conclusion, thank you for your support and especially your patience during the massive change that occurred to the release of version 2.0. We understand that many players feel overwhelmed by the size and scale of what has changed, but we hope over time the adjustments and improvements will speak for themselves. To many, ourselves included, it feels like a whole new game and we're just as excited as you are at the launch of two years to see where we take Dragalia Lost next. We're giving all players the following in items this month. Four gold Fafnir's, two million rupees, exquisite hunt, they even know that, oh my god, we, we fucked up on the rupee thing. Uh, 20 exquisite honey and 20,000 elder water. Next installment this month will be posted around 11 p.m. October 31st, 2020. Till then, thank you for reading. Goodbye. Um, okay. I feel like I don't know a whole lot more. I feel like we already knew that she was going to be next. But in terms of every, I wanted, I wanted to see some units. I wanted, I really want to know if we're going to have a collab anytime. It's actually kind of annoying to me that we have not had a collab since Fire Emblem Heroes. I would like a new collab. I don't know. Uh, perfectly fine. I uh, obviously they're keeping the Halloween stuff for themselves. Maybe they'll add Halloween variants to a Cursed Archives and Stirring Shadows. These two are specifically very spooky events, so I I, I don't mind it at all. Um, we'll see how this onslaught event kind of goes um, as well. New difficulty. It all makes sense. Like obviously at the two year mark, they're like, okay, Guido's done. Time for the next hard thing. Um, how the because currently the people are really strong and they're really destroying everything so yeah that's this month in dragalia lost uh i'm gonna keep playing dragalia lost that's how i feel about it i don't know that's how i feel i'm gonna keep playing thank you very much for watching the video i'll see you guys in the next one and remember if you ended up liking this video you can leave a like comment and subscribe if you want some more from me. Till next time, everyone. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.